input demand function responses. So now we're going to look at how the input demands which we have calculated yesterday. These were the conditional input demands, right? Root of W2 by W1Y for input 1. And for input 2, it was root of W1 by W2Y. So how is the input demand going to change when the input prices are going to change? That is when the own input price is going to change. How the input demand is going to change when the price of the other input is going to change? How the input demand is going to change when the output is going to change? That is what we're going to look at it today. So we have what? <clears throat> so demand for so conditional input demand for input 1 is root of w2 by w1 by root of w2 by w1 by right okay now the first thing which we are going to look at is response to changes in its own price response to changes in its own price That is when the price of input 1 is going to change, how the demand for input 1 is going to change. That is what we are going to look at it. Right? Okay. So if you just look at it, your uh, del of x1c by del 1. This is coming out to be negative. This is coming out to be negative. So it means what? When the input, <clears throat> when the own input price is going to change, then the demand for such an input is going to fall, right? So the demand for the input demand for the input Is decreasing in its own price right demand for the input is decreasing in its own price right <clears throat> and it also means what that the input demand curve Has a negative slope. Input demand curve has a negative slope. So that's the first thing which you understand from this. That is, let's say this is the demand for the input, and here you have the input price W1. Here you have the input price W1. Uh, so at the higher price, you're going to demand less input, and at the lower price, you're going to demand higher input. So this is what the input uh, demand function will look like, right, for, for this guy, input 1, hmm. okay. Uh, achha, one more thing is that you can also look at uh, the sensitivity of input demand to the variation in its own price. That is basically you, you can look at the elasticity of input 1 with respect to the changes in the price of the input 1. Right, so you can also look at that. That is, uh, please write the sensitivity of input demand Hmm. 
to the changes in its price. That is basically your elasticity, right? That is basically your elasticity. So it means what? Elasticity of input 1 with respect to its input price. So how do you write that? That is del x1 by del w1 into w1 by x1. This is what the elasticity is. Uh, so if the if the input prices are going to increase by 1% right then the the fall in the input demand is going to be by this much amount right so the sorry this much percentage so if input price or you can say if w1 increases by 1%, right? The firm would reduce the number of, you can say number of workers or the amount of input one. So if I say X1 to be labor, the amount of input 1 by ex1 w1 percentage right and similarly if you want to write the elasticity of input 2 with respect to uh, the price of its own input that is elasticity of input 2 with respect to the price of its own input w2 then how do you write that You can also write it like this. You can also write it like this, right? Okay. Then the second thing is, one, we have seen what is the response uh, to the changes in the employment of the input with respect to its own price. Now you can also look at how what is going to be the response to the changes uh, in the employment of the input when the price of the other input is going to change, right? That's the second thing. in the price of the other input. Hmm. So when the price of input 2 is going to change, then how the how the demand for input 1 is going to change? That is what you're going to look at it, right? So if you just uh, have a look at this, you have demand for input 1 is equal to root of W2 by root of W1 into root of I. That is what it is. Now, if you just find out how the demand for input 1 is going to change when the price of the other input is going to change, that is greater than 0. So the demand for the input is going to increase as the price of the other input is going to increase. Why? Because when the price of the other input has increased, I mean, you think that it, that's expensive, so I should be rather demanding this input. So the demand for the input increases.
as the price of other input prices as the price of other input prices so it shifts the demand curve for the input of the input outputs it shifts the demand curve for the input outputs so you have a demand for the input you have the price of the of, of its own input then even though the price of the input has not changed but you're still going to demand now more input more of this input why because the price of the other input has increased right so even though the price of this input has not changed but you'll be demanding sorry but you'll be demanding more of this input uh, you'll be demanding more of this input so as input one becomes more expensive so the other input or, or you can say sorry as the input 2 becomes more expensive input 1 is going to be employed more right as input 2 becomes more expensive input 1 becomes attractive right becomes attractive hmm? okay so <clears throat> other is other other response could be how the input demand is going to change when the when the output is going to change hmm? that's a third response let's look at that response to the changes in the output response to the changes in the output right so if the input is normal right and uh, if i want to produce more units of the output i will be employing more inputs right well if the input is inferior then if i want to i if i want to produce more units of output i'll be demanding less of this input that's an idea. Uh, normal input. When the firm increases. demand for inputs to produce more units of i then such input is normal
but this is exactly like your normal goods so when your income increases you demand more of that uh, so here also here income is working like your uh, output right so when output is increasing you want to use more of such inputs right inferior input this much we know that if you want to produce more output you have to use more inputs uh, so for inferior inputs what happen when the firm input when the firms demand decrease in y the input is inferior right the input is inferior hmm. uh, so so this is what your uh, demand for the or how the input demands are going to respond due to the changes in its own price in the price of the other input and in the price of the output uh, sorry in the amount of the output right so this you have done using an example which we derived yesterday hmm, for the cobb douglas function so we'll take the discussion further tomorrow thank you beta